It's going to be a rip roaring time this weekend in Tampa Bay as well. Now, of course, we're very proud of what the Buccaneers have done this year, but it always wasn't so good. As many of you know, there was the 0 26, the Yuccaneers. So to get some real perspective on how far the Buccaneers have come, let's get ready for a little trip down memory lane. Here's our own Dan Lucas. As the Bay Area continues to buzz around the Bucks' run to the Super Bowl, lots of lifelong Buck fans, no doubt, turn back to that miracle that took place in Tampa back in 1979. Unlike the 2002 season, the Bucks of 79 were expected to be losers. But just as this year's team captivated an entire community, the 79 Bucks rallied the Bay Area and served notice to the NFL that Tampa Bay football can be a winner. In 1974, the National Football League voted to expand from 26 teams to 28. The West Coast NFL Task Force, based in Tampa, was awarded the league's 27th franchise. Now here's a fact that Buck fans may not know. The original owner of the team wasn't supposed to be Hugh Culverhouse. It was Tom McCloskey of Philadelphia. He declined ownership, however, and Culverhouse turned down ownership of the league's other new franchise, Seattle. The NFL allowed Culverhouse to purchase the new team in Tampa. Two months later, in February of 1975, the team was given its nickname, the Buccaneers. The Bucks would play in Tampa Stadium, and a frantic construction took place to expand the seating from 47,000 to 72,000. The Bucks hired John McKay to be their first head coach. McKay's resume included four national championships at the University of Southern California. Another interesting fact, the Bucks would play their inaugural season in the AFC West Division, not the NFC Central. Just think, if that never changed, the Bucks and Oakland Raiders would be division rivals today, not Super Bowl opponents. May I say that we're here for one reason and one reason only. That's to bring the fans great professional football. In 1976, the Buccaneers took the field for the first time ever. The records don't tell you is the Bucks actually won the second game they ever played, a 17-3 preseason win over the Atlanta Falcons. What followed was one of the most miserable losing streaks in pro sports history, 0-26, an NFL record. The 77 season began with 12 consecutive losses. Finally, on December 11th, 1977, the first official victory for the Tampa Bay Bucks, a 33-14 win at New Orleans. Shades of last week's homecoming at Raymond James, more than 8,000 fans greeted the team at one buck place. One week later, the team's first ever home victory, a 17-7 win over the St. Louis Cardinals. Go what took place in 1979 was unimaginable. In just their fourth season, the Bucks would win 10 games. And on the final day of the regular season, a 3-0 monsoon victory over the Kansas City Chiefs would earn the Bucks their first ever division title. In just their fourth season of play, the Bucks entered uncharted territory, the playoffs. The campaign, nicknamed From Worst to First, continued with a milestone 24-17 divisional playoff win over the Philadelphia Eagles. The Bucks were a game away from shocking the world and heading to the Super Bowl. In the NFC Championship, the Bucks trailed the Los Angeles Rams 9-0 when tight end Jimmy Giles hauled in this touchdown pass. But a penalty nullified the play and set the final. The Rams were headed to Super Bowl 14. The Bucks and the Bay Area were left with unfulfilled dreams. The franchise wouldn't come close again for another 20 years. You're looking live at some future Buccaneers. There's Jay Gruden and his boys having fun playing a little Super Bowl of their own. And we'll be back to La Jolla in just a moment.